everyone. So good to be with you on this Shabbat. And we are in such a moment in Torah. Those of you who come and, and hear me teach know that mostly I say we're in what in Torah? Wilderness, right? Wilderness, most of Torah. Wilderness, most of our lives. But then we have epiphanies sometimes, aha moments, things come together. Moments of courage, moments of faith, big leaps, small leaps, all of it, and then back into the wilderness. And we're inside of one of these epiphanous kind of moments in Torah. And that is the moments of revelation. We had redemption, right? We walked through the waters, we crossed out of Mitzrayim, the narrow place just recently in Torah, we're in the book of Exodus, and we had the big walls of water, we made it to the other side, and the women who packed their timbrels and were ready, right, we sang and we danced, and we entered the wilderness immediately, and now we're at Mount Sinai, receiving revelation, ah, revelation, redemption, and revelation, a lot of wilderness after this. <laughs> so what is in this revelation moment? It started um, last week in the Parsha where the mountain shook and shofar blasts and fire and cloud. And there was this amazing encounter with the divine, which we're in still. And the first instructions came down, the Ten Commandments. And now the instructions continue. And in addition to the instructions continuing in this Torah portion, we have a ritual of commitment. So we're at the mountain having this direct encounter. Moses arises in the morning. We've received and received instruction. Moses arrives here in chapter 24 to do this ritual. Builds an altar at the foot of the mountain and builds 12 pillars for the 12 tribes. And we know somebody out there put in a 13th pillar for Dina. We see you, Dina. We'll go back right now and put in that 13th pillar. So here are the pillars for this ritual. The people come and make offerings. Moses takes some blood from the off offering, throws it on the altar, and then on the people. And we read the book of the covenant, the Sefer Habrit. And then they proclaim together, we will do and we will understand. We will do and we will hear, or we will do and we will understand. Doing first and then understanding. So sprinkle some blood on the people. Then God tells Moses, ascend the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets and the Torah and the mitzvot that I've written to teach them. So it's a massive communal ritual, a declaration of commitment. Not a save a nishma, we will do and we will understand. This direct encounter leads to this statement. So if we think about it, the process is this. They're in the encounter. They say, yes, we will do. Now tell us what it is. in it. Yes, I'll do it, whatever it is. Now tell us what to do. I think about when a baby comes into a room. That's that moment of the encounter. You're like, oh, people's face change and your body changes, right? You're watching this baby come in. And if that baby started to fall, you would reach for it. Grab it immediately, right? Catch it. And then get the next details. What do I do now? Encounter. Do it. Now what do I do? 
And this encounter is happening collectively, right? The light of each other's faces. Imagine if all of us looked at each other like we were that baby. That's something to try. Just walking around the streets. Oh, oh. Seriously, you don't have to just say that out loud because that might make people a little afraid. But you could think it in your head. Look at that baby, look at that encounter. Torah is given to all of us in the light of this encounter. And when we receive Torah, it's in the light of each other's faces. And this connection between God and the people, God and Moses, Panim, of Panim, in the light of each other's faces. The philosopher Levinas says it can only be in relationship with one person to another that this can happen. The Torah is given in the light of a face. The epiphany of the other person is ipso facto my responsibility to them. I see you, I'm responsible to you. The rules are based in this encounter. I see you, I'm responsible to you. I see you, I'm responsible to you. We're in this, I'm responsible to you. And you to me, this is the pact with the good. I gotcha, I gotcha. The infinity encountered in Sinai, Aviva Zornberg says, is also the infinity encountered in the face of another. It requires action, response. And that comes before calculation or choice. When we see another human, ah, there you are. There is this moment together before the particulars and the rules and the narrative and the patterns that we're going to get into. There is the seeing, the beholding, the connecting. And then there's the particulars of the rules and the stories we're going to play out together. That step says, that step before the step, step says, we're here and between us, I will do. And then, yes, tell me so I can understand. Sometimes, maybe, with folks we are around a lot, the people we are around the most, maybe, we lose some of that transcendence. And we are in the particulars most of the time. In our family, in our schools, in our workplaces, we're doing it, we're doing it. And we don't have the moment always to be in the rapture of your face, your being. This is one of the things this Parsha is inviting us to do, to be in the place and then do and understand, to be in it with each other. I remember when my, one of my kids was little, <clears throat> I said, we're in a hurry. I know you want a shower, but we are in a hurry. So you got to go quick. And he said, okay, mom, no problem. I'm going to jump in the shower, feel it, wash off and get out. I was like, yeah, okay. In a hurry, you are going to get in the shower and you are going to feel it. And then you're going to wash off and get out. Those are the requirements, right? That place, that is part of this encounter. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to be here with you. I'm going to be in this. And then I'll do the things, right? The moment we get to let ourselves just be inside of it. And that could be hard with people we've made commitments to that we have a breed with, right? We've made commitments to how we're going to be, spouses, kids, parents, to go back inside and remember the infinite. And guess what we get, everybody? Oh, such a gift. We get Shabbat. And every week, there's this invitation into the infinite. Every week, this can be part of our Shabbat practice, at least for part of the day. Oh, I'm going to just be with you, just in this place of beholding you. 
as a part of what our Shabbat practice gets to be. This place of encounter. This is this reminder on Shabbat that we get to do this together. So that's the first thing, the encounter, the being with. But then we get this interesting, we will do, and then we will understand. So what's that about? Was there a wrong order said? I think for contemporary folks, they feel very strongly. Rabbi, I'm not going to do anything I don't understand. But I do spend time encouraging people, why don't you try it? And then maybe you'll understand it. I promise you, I'm not going to ask you in our tradition, at least the parts that we're upholding, are not going to ask you to do anything immoral or harmful. So what would it be like to try it and then understand? Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory, he thinks of this Parsha, and he says, when Moses went and told the people all the words and the laws, they responded with one voice, everything that God has said, we will do, not a say. And then he took the book of, book of the covenant and read it to the people, and they said, we will do a, and understand, not a say, Vanishma, everything that God has said. The first two responses, which refer only to action, not a say, are given unanimously. The people respond together, we're told. They do it with one voice. And here, nishma, hearing means listening, paying attention, understanding, absorbing, internalizing, responding, obeying, so many things in hearing. But that has no unanimity in the text. That everybody does on their own. The doing we do together, the understanding we do individually. Ah, such an important consequence in Judaism this is. We are a community of doing. We have Jewish law, we have the mitzvot, the way of doing. And then, then when it comes to our understandings, our spiritualities, there is not one single normative Jewish approach. The Tanakh speaks in a multiplicity of voices. Isaiah is not Ezekiel. Torah contains law and narrative and history and mystic vision, ritual and prayer. There are norms about how to act and then our understanding gets to go where we go. So what is this doing? What is this doing? I'll give you an example in this Parsha. When you encounter an ox or a donkey of an enemy wandering, you shall return it to them repeatedly. If you see the donkey of somebody you hate crouching under its burden, would you refrain from helping him? Rashi tells us there's a question mark here. You shall repeatedly help. You shall repeatedly help. That's the doing. So next time you're out there on the streets, you see the donkey doing that. Even if it's your enemies, you're going to help. Okay, so obviously this is not what we're doing every day. It's in their language and their time, but this is how we then go. This is what the rabbis then gave us in their time and then invited us to think, what is the doing in our time? And these are the mitzvot, the commandments. And for us also, we add in oh, with great gusto, the midot, and that's the doing. And we've talked about this over and over with the midot. You can't just think about it. You can't just say, oh yeah, compassion. I like compassion. That's awesome. Glad you do. But how about you tell those voices in your head that are telling you mean things about yourself? Shh. I'm going to be compassionate to myself. Ah, I want courage. And then I hear you say that really offensive thing. I'm going to see something. Is that the pact with the good? The baby's falling. I catch it. That's the doing, friends. That's what we're compelled to do. That's what, as a community at Nefesh, we are a community driven by these midot and the, and the compelling to act. So let me leave you with 
a practice to try, a doing of not doing on the Sabbath where we're not doing. So here's a practice to try, and it puts us back into the encounter. Remember I said before that on Shabbat, we have a weekly reminder that we could practice being in the encounter. So this is a practice that comes from, of you may have done it in rye parenting or mindful parenting or in authentic movement is another place this happens. And that is that you're gonna set a timer for some amount of time, maybe it's how long it takes the crazy squirrels to run back and forth five times, because that's what happens at our house. I don't know how, what your timer is, but you're going to set a timer, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And in that time, you're going to be with the people in your home or the animals, if that's the case for you, without intervention, without an agenda, without judgment without directing. And just try that. Of course, if people talk to you, you're not gonna be like, I'm not talking because I'm just being with you. <laughs> it's okay to talk and respond. But it's a stance of non-intervention. It's a stance of being with. And it's a practice that is celebrated and it does wonders when you have little babies. But let me tell you that we got to do this with each other of all ages, certainly with our kids as they grow and with each other as friends, as lovers and partners to just be for a period of time. And then the practice ends and you go on. But I invite you to try this as a way to be in the encounter. Will you have moments of like, oh man, do I want to tell them to shut up right now? because we just had that fight before and I, I want to remind them, no, mm -mm, not right now, mm -mm, not for this amount of time. <laughs> You're going to be in a practice of presence, non-intervention. And I'd like to hear how that goes. So please let me know. It's a stance of being with this encounter of witnessing and presence. Shabbat is made for this, but you could do it any day of the week. May you step into the encounter face to face with each other, with God, with your beloveds, with the world, with yourself, and may you do and understand. Shabbat Shalom.